Good morning, Stanton. Look at this view. Uh, this is how I ended my last video, and this is how I'm starting this one, and I'm just blown away with how this looks. It looks so awesome, even from back here, but just, oh, filling up the view with just, I love it. I love watching stuff like that. So this is part two of my starter pa package pledge video. This is dealing with the larger pledges. So we are looking at the over $100 price packages and uh, hopefully uh, you found the first video entertaining and this one will be a little more informative for if you're looking to spend a little bit more but as you know even with just the basic package you can get into this game and enjoy views like this so enjoy the video We are now over the $100 mark. $115 gets you a Cutlass Black. Now, Cutlass has, uh, or sorry, Drake has three Cutlass variants. The Cutlass Black, the Cutlass Red, and the Cutlass Blue. If I was to look here at Cutlass... Oh. If I was looking here, you can see the three here. Uh, the blue is more of like a a police and bounty hunting ship. The red has a medical bay and a different side doors. We'll talk about those in when I look at the video. And the Cutlass Black. The Cutlass Black is the only one you can get in the uh, current starter packages. But you can buy these other ships uh, except for the Best in Show Edition which was only I believe available let me see. I don't think it's available right now. No. So it was only available with the uh, with the Best in Show at the Aerospace Expo. Could you buy these ones? Cutlass Red, you can buy 135. So a little more. Uh, Cutlass Blue. So this is how you can check out information about the ships. So Cutlass Blue, you cannot currently buy, uh, but I believe you can rent in game. I may be wrong about that. But you can look at any of the ships. Instead of looking at game packages, look at the ships and then you can uh, look at technical overviews uh, you're looking at specifications like how much cargo 12 SCU of cargo here you can look at the hard points so the types of weapons and radar that it has this is a great way to check out the ships and see what kind of stats they have so back to the Cutlass Black package for $115 uh, the Cutlass is a great starter ship uh, so if you can afford more money and you want to start out with a Cutlass Black which is great for cargo, great for carrying a rock, great for running bounties. It is a solid starter ship but it's quite a bit more money than any of the other games and if you ever wanted to get uh, Squadron 42 as opposed to a $20 add-on this is now going to bump it up by another $45. This you can see comes up with a little bit more. Buying the Cutlass Black you're getting the industrial hangar, which is a larger hangar, 5,000 UEC, a little more if you use the, re the uh, referral code, six months insurance, digital manual, digital star map, digital soundtrack, as well as the game. So you're getting a little bit more by getting the Cutlass Black. The Drake Cutlass Black. If you've been watching any of my videos, you know that I've been using this ship. Uh, it was a ship that I was not a fan of at all when I first saw it. Still not a great fan of how it looks, but how it performs, uh, I'm quite happy with it. It's got side doors here. You can't get into them from the side, but these are great for if you had other people, you're doing defense work and you needed to fire. Basically a very solid rough and tumble military ship. Uh, so there's a door on each side and there's the ramp on the back. and You've seen me rent the ship and a rock to make money. This is a great money-making ship. Uh, can open the door here. There you go. More doors on the side. Lots of cargo space. Now the the Cutlass has three variants: the black, which is this one; the blue, which is like a police interdiction type uh, uh, 
ship, and a red, which is a medical play ship, where these side doors are replaced by airlocks for boarding ships, and it's got a medical bay and a lot less room in the back. Go through here into the crew quarters. We've got two beds. We've got a turret seat here. We've got weapon storage. We've got a lot of physical things. And we've got two seats, uh, pilot and co-pilot. So we'll get into the pilot seat. And the seat will raise up a bit, giving you fairly good, again, field of view. All the MFDs are straight ahead. So where some ships, you have to look to the side to see them. This one here, you can see all the information you want all through here, which is really good. The one thing I don't like about this ship is if I do this and we are looking at currently the center of the screen here where we're aiming, you're actually aiming here to aim at the targets where you're going to jump to. Uh, it's not lined up right, so hopefully they do fix that, but currently that doesn't seem to work. But we're going to turn that off again. Uh, we'll go for an exterior view. Uh, now one thing about this ship is it takes off and then if you hit K you can turn the pods facing forward. So we have forward facing pods and hit K again. We have VTOL which gives you more lifting power. So that is something kind of different with this ship is it's got VTOL. And you can see the uh, the uh, turret that one person would go in up here at the top. That's where they'd be able to shoot. So you can actually aim straight back and when you're in VTOL those turn one here, yeah. Uh, you can aim pretty much all around the ship, defend the ship, including defending from a fairly low angle with that turret there. Meanwhile, the pilot does have control of the other guns, makes it a pretty solid fighting ship. Good single player ship, but also a good small multi crew ship. So, if you're getting into to multi crew play, getting a Cutlass Black is useful. go to the front and take a look at the front. So I'm thinking these wings at the front are kind of like atmospheric control surfaces, but I'm not sure. So you can see lots of windows, so it's a good view all around when coming in for a landing. Very solid, almost like talons for the uh, landing gear. Yeah, neat ship, Cutlass bra uh, Black by Drake. One thing I will say I like for design, where most ships are kind of clean inside, this one here has like exposed girders and insulation. It's You can tell it was a ship that was built to be functional over aesthetically pleasing. So there it is. The Hornet F-7C is another specific fighting ship. This is one that I have very little information that I can tell you about. I don't have an opinion about the ship. I've flown it very few times. Uh, I think the second time I ever flew it is in the video you're about to watch of me just kind of checking it out. Uh, and then the other time was at one of the free fly events. But it is a fighting only ship. But it comes with the same items that you can see that you would get with the Cutlass Black uh, for getting the Hornet for 125 US. The F. 7C Hornet from Anvil. This is a ship that I have never actually flown or really checked out, so we are checking this out together for the first time. This is, I think, about 125. You'll know because I'll have the information up on the screen, but it is 100% a fighter, as you can tell. Look at this ship. It is all engine and guns, and a little tiny seat for you to pop in. Well, actually, you know, we'll go in first. So, go here. Enter pilot seat. Let's check it out. So, ladder opens up. Climb in. Little step here. Look at that. There's not much to the ship. You want to do cargo runs? You want to even do package deliveries? You are out of luck in this ship. But if you want to take on enemies and shoot them out of the sky, this is probably the ship to go. So, Lots of little displays there, but the main ones, the ones that you can operate, looks like you only have four MFDs. Oh, you got six because you got some up here. We've got uh, some warning lights, we've got uh, different things like that. Now, let's look at this. I don't know 
what that is. Why is it round in the center? Is that just all weird engine? Kind of an interesting looking ship. Now if I... Oh, there we go. Oh! Cool. So, we'll do this again. Got our landing gear down. The wings slide out. And then all these little... You can see these little directional uh, tubes have all popped in and out. So that's cool. So we have a lot of like different uh, control surfaces. That's kind of a neat thing. Opens up. Look at those. Look at those little thrusters move to keep you on track. That's neat. Okay. So that is the Hornet. Definitely a solid ship. And look at for like, oh, this is why I can't land. Gear down. Let's put that down. Landing gear deployed. Landing look at over here, all the decoys. So if you're fighting and you're trying to, to stop missile locks, we got 48 decoys and we got five like chaff. Uh, we got Panthers. Yeah, this is definitely a ship for combat. Cool looking ship. So that is the Anvil F7C. So when Squadron 42 comes out, I'm assuming I'm going to spend a lot of time flying one of these, at least learning how to fly. Uh, I'd look at getting one in game to give it a go, but it's definitely not one that I would get personally as a starter. But I like how it looks, and I like the the control jets, the, the directional thrusters. Really makes it feel like that is a solid, maneuverable ship. We are looking at the MISC Freelancer starter pack. The Freelancer is a ship that was announced during the original Kickstarter uh, of the game. And the Freelancer is a dedicated cargo ship. Comes with all the same things that you're looking at that you were getting with the Cutlass and with the uh, F, what was it? FC7? I can't remember what it was called. No, F7C? I was close. Uh, it's kind of a neat ship. Uh, and it is got a lot of cargo space. If I go here and I go to Freelancer. we can see the amount of cargo in this ship. It's got 66 SCU. So not as much as something massive like a Caterpillar, but for a starter ship, it's got a decent amount to start running. As long as you're running more expensive goods, yeah, you can do a little bit of cargo running on here. Uh, it's one of the, the first starter freight ships. Uh, it can still fight and shoot, but it's really for, uh, especially this version, for running cargo, that is what it's for. The MISC Freelancer. Uh, MISC makes quite a few ships, the different variations of the Freelancer, the Freelancer, the Dur, the, the MISC. They also make uh, the Prospector, and you can see some similar design notes on the front of the ship looking at the Prospector. Now you could get into the ship through here, through this ladder here. Just like the Prospector climb up there, you can also enter the ship in the back through here. Now this is a quite a large cargo hold and you can get a great uh, Grey Cat rock in here. Uh, you have to watch out that you don't ram into these pistons here or hit the, uh, the turret. If I get into the turret here, how do I do that? Enter turret. There we go. So we can get into this turret seat, check it out. So this is a good ship for multi-crew again. You do have the ability to uh, to defend each other from both the turret, which can fire backwards, so when you're making a run. It does look like this should have rotating VTOL like the Cutlass Black. And there is official video that showed this ship having that function. It does not. I don't know why it doesn't. I don't know if they're going to fix it and if it's going to change one day, but currently there is no VTOL function on the 
freelancer. If you know anyone who got into Star Citizen right back in the day of the Kickstarter, there's a possibility that they may have the freelancer. This is one of the first ships that was up uh, on offer for the game. So we have cargo there. We have more cargo here. You can see the cargo designated zones. And we're making our way to the living quarters. Now, if you come through the ele uh, elevator, the ladder, that's where we come through. We've got a little workstation here. we got four beds here. Uh, I believe bathroom here. Is this bathroom? Yes. little bathroom here. Kind of a little space. Uh, some kind of a... I'd say kitchenette, but not really, about four drinking glasses. And then, when you get into the cockpit area, all the freelancers, very similar, four seats. So you have a co-pilot and the pilot. You also have uh, auxiliary crew. Plus, you're going to have uh, people can head out and work in the turrets, but they can do navigation. One drawback of the freelancer is the field of view. you got a little window up there. You've got, like, this slit that you can see through. You can't see where you're landing. You can't really see here because a big structural support. So not the best field of view. But the cockpit's cool. Got a lot of buttons, a lot of design. Uh, two screens, which doesn't seem like a lot, but this is a multi-crew ship. So you got two screens, plus you got two screens over there. Plus you've got your crew behind you all working together. So everyone's sharing. If you're seeing here, that has an MFD, that has an MFD two there, two there. So there is six, but it's spread out throughout the crew. So we're going to head. So we'll head back and we'll check out. Now that the lights are on, you can see the spacious cargo hold here. Lots of room in this ship. Let's take a look at the outside. So the Freelancer Max is the only one that's massively different. Uh, the interior of the Dur or the Misk is more military or exploratory, where this is definitely cargo. The Max is heavy cargo. The body is wider. So if you were looking for something to hold a rock or uh, some dragonflies, the Max would be the way to go. However, I would look at other ships. The Max does not fly well. It is a heavy, lumbering ship. Uh, not really my favorite to fly. That is what this is for. And then, last but not least, we're going to talk about the Constellation Andromeda. I will kind of go over the exploration pack, but really, if you're just starting out in Star Citizen, unsure what ship to buy, you're certainly not going to be buying this package. But this is the Constellation Andromeda. This is another one that I did not take out and explore with. Uh, but this is one that I'm going to have to find one that I can uh, take a look at. So I don't have any video for the Constellation Andromeda. Now the Constellation has, if you look here, for $275, comes with the Great Cat uh, PTV and the Constellation. Now, uh, I've just noticed here that when you're looking at this page here, you can click here and that'll bring you to the ship page. So perfect. So this has the Revel and York hangar, which is a larger hangar. It's got the digital manual soundtrack and all these items that can be used for decorating your Revel in York hangar. But if we look at the ship, the Constellation ship here, uh, go to specifications, 96 SU of cargo, uh, it's considered a medium freight and a gunship, definitely has some good firepower on it. Uh, top speed, you're looking at 190 meters per second, uh, afterburn speed of almost a thousand meters a second, uh, we can load up a hull view here and take a look at the exterior of the ship. Here it is. So it's got an elevator in front here. It's got a freight elevator in the bottom here. It's got this ship can attach to the... Uh, why can't I stop this from spinning? Uh, this ship here attaches through the uh, docking port here, so you can actually have other ships dock with you, which is kind of interesting. Uh, there are a few different variants of the Constellation. So we have the Constellation Andromeda, the Taurus, the Aquila, the Phoenix, and the Phoenix Emerald. So they're all slightly different and different interiors. And that's why I can't really tell you much about this Constellation. Because uh, I don't know really the differences between the two. I know that I think the Phoenix 
is the Phoenix the one that's like very fancy? I'm not sure. So here's some interior shots. You can see uh, pilot seat. Uh, there's a missile rack somewhere in this this ship. There's a bunch of different. Uh, you can see a fairly large cargo area. The cargo area can also hold ground vehicles or smaller ships. There's the missile racks that you can see. Uh, so you can look through the ship pages and check out the the stats and how the ships look. So that is the constellation Andromeda for 275. This is again one that I I don't have any video of, so uh, I'm not going to be able to show you anything there. I will show for the last bit the exploration pack for over a thousand dollars, one thousand one hundred dollars. This is not one that I would recommend anyone get for a starter pack. Uh, the only thing going for this is the 2000 UEC starting money is nothing. We'll be able to get more uh, later. It's the lifetime insurance. That is the uh, the thing that's important. Also, uh, some ships uh, have nameable rights. So if you're looking around in the, the universe, you can name your ship. This one has name reservation, which means you can reserve the name of the ship you want. How naming works in the game is if I have a Carrick and I name it Bob, no one else can name a Carrick Bob. They can name the Dragonfly Bob, they can name the Terrapin Bob, but each ship individually has a name that no one else can have. So when ships are being, uh, being able to be named, being able to reserve a name to make sure you can have the name you want is important. There's only a couple ships right now uh, the 890 Jump, the MSR, and I can't think of what else. Uh, there's only a few ships that currently in-game you can name, and they're written on the side of the ship. Also, if you buy a ship in-game, if you buy a Carrick in-game, or the MSR that I bought in-game, uh, cannot be named. So we have the Carrick, we have the Anvil Pisces, uh, which we've looked at, uh, the, the Tumbrel Cyclone, the Terrapin, which we looked at, the Drake Dragonfly, which is like a speeder bike, and the Freelancer Dirt, which is more of an exploration version of the Freelancer. So you can see it's got a different paint scheme, and uh, you can watch a commercial here, I'm not going to bother with that right now, but it looks a bit different, uh, and this is definitely uh, less cargo and more uh, exploration. The Carrick is a pretty impressive ship. So as a standalone ship, the Carrick is pretty impressive, but it's not always for sale. During the UEE Expo, it may be, but it is massive. And I do have a video of checking out a Carrick, uh, which I will be able to show. We can just It's not very long. I only check it out for a very short while, but we can take a look. So that... So that is it. Again, uh, this is just my opinion on what uh, packages I like and what I think about these packages and these ships. Uh, feel free to kind of do some research, checking out which ships you like. But again, you can play Star, Star Citizen with the basic ships and earn money and earn or rent other ships in the game or team up with other people. I don't see the, the point of spending massive amounts on a ship package when you're just starting out and you just want to play. The only thing that I really say besides using a referral code to get a little bit of bonus is getting maybe one of the two with the combo so when Squadron 42 comes out uh, it's a $20 add-on and this 100% if you're enjoying Star Citizen and you enjoy games like Space Combat games with a story with missions is going to be worth the extra $20 that you tack on to one of these two starter ships so those would be my opinion and my suggestion but any ship that you are comfortable in buying and you think you're really going to like, uh, I would go with. Also, the next free fly event, uh, I'm assuming, is going to be in November. Uh, it usually happens, the Aerospace Expo, I believe, is the next one. If you have not uh, played yet and you really want to get into it, uh, when the free fly event goes on, you're able to take out any ship. Uh, from the different manufacturers that are showing a ship and give them a try. And I would say that that's a great time if you're if you're really unsure. But if you want to get into it, 
get a starter package, you need a starter package. Do not get just a ship, because you will not be able to play the game. That is the most important thing to remember. So hopefully this helped, uh, and hopefully that means that soon I'm going to see more of you flying around in the verse. Thanks for watching. The biggest and baddest starter pack there is. Look at the size of this ship. This is the Anvil Carrick, which is a massive multi-crew uh, all-around ship. Uh, you can't even really see what the ship looks like here. It's got these side shields with giant turrets on them. Uh, this is the Expedition version. Uh, it's got like the red windows like the the uh, Pisces. Now with this ship, with this uh, starter package, you do get this massive ship. You also get the Pisces Expedition and the Tumbral Cyclone which is like a uh, a side by side like a dirt like a, a sand buggy like a dune buggy kind of thing uh, you get the terrapin which is more of a uh, kind of a uh, reconnaissance um, solid ship solid kind of tank like ship uh, we get the dragonfly black which is like a like a speeder bike and then you get the freelancer dur which is the exploratory version of the freelancer look at the size of the ship. Now this front window is cool because you can have quite a few field of view in a ship this massive. What we're going to do is we're going to figure out where the... how do we get the... <laughs> how do I get this open? There we go, ramp access. I knew it was somewhere. Look at the size of this ramp. So you can definitely fit a lot of vehicles or items in this ship. Drive them right up into here. Uh, we have some cool little features. Uh, there's a little half wall here. How do I get this half wall up? Is this this one? Raise ramp, there you go. So that was kind of like a little visual thing. So when you're driving vehicles, they'll stop there so that they won't get in your way. Uh, we've got a nice little cargo hold here. We've got different ways to get through. This is a ladder which heads all the way up the ship. I don't want to climb it, I just want to look. All the way up to the higher decks, so you can climb up there. Uh, we've got elevators here, docking collar, so when we have Docking to a space station, you're going to come through here. We've got spacesuit storage here for EVAs. We're going to go through here. We have lots of cargo here. Each of these elevators take you down into these cargo holds. There's multiple cargo holds. Uh, they keep going the same. I think there's three. We'll just keep going. We'll look. It's been a while since I've been in a Carrick. So I am going to get lost. I don't know where everything is, but there, that was the three cargo. We got some more spacesuits. Uh, we got an elevator that'll go up, more spacesuit storage, uh, access to one of the side turrets. So those turrets we're looking at, or is that a front turret? I'm not sure which turret that is. We're going to head back to the elevator and we're going to go up to the next level. There is multiple levels on this ship and they are all separate. You notice this one's kind of an industrial look to it because we are on the sub deck. We can go to the habitation deck which is living quarters and you're going to notice a change right away in the kind of the look of the ship. So come through here and now it's a little bit cleaner. We have like a rec room through here. So this is a medical zone. So you can actually go to these medical beds and set a spawn so that when you come through here if you die you can reset a spawn into there I believe in this room here We've got some doctor's office and storage rooms on the side so you can see here we got some medical stuff some plants for growing and herbs this would be the doctor's office on this side very clean lots of cool little things here just the detail in this ship is amazing. Uh, 
But what do you expect? You're spending over a thousand dollars to get this starter pack. You would definitely want to have a lot of detail, a lot of bang for your buck. Uh, down here is like a conference room. You can see a little table there. There's a pool table here. Uh, when these are made to work, they can actually play. Uh, just like the little video games you see around, I think that'll be kind of fun. I don't know what that door is over there. Let's go check out what's in this doorway. Since I don't know. Oh, here is crew quarters. Now this is crew quarters. This is not captain's quarters. If you're the captain, you're definitely not going to be sleeping with everyone else here. Got a bathroom on this side. Come on, open up. Oh, it's a nice bathroom. Actually quite spacious. So crew quarters here. And we go to the, one of the bridges. So this is the lower half of the bridge. We can you know, walk right onto these windows. Look at the field of view you can have here. That's the second secondary bridge is up there. But this is bridge here for the crew to work. So it's very close to where the crew quarters are. Now we can call an elevator and we'll move up to the upper bridge. Now one thing about a ship being this big, there's a good chance I'm going to get the ship impounded before I, I ever do anything. This is kind of an interesting place, so when you're piloting the ship, you do it from a standing position. But we can kind of take a look around the ship, but we are going to be clipping through walls like crazy. But you can see there's kind of the, sh the shape of the ship, and we are standing right there at the front. You can't really see us that well, but we're in there. Look at the size of this ship. So we're going to try to find that uh, landing bay. Remember the, uh, the uh, what's it called, the Pisces, the little winglets fold in? Well, the reason why the winglets fold in is so it can fit into that little uh, hangar there. So you can actually have a ship with a hangar in it. It's pretty crazy. So we're going to head back. we got some escape pods here for the crew. We've got some drone repair shops here. Uh, not sure what's there. Lots of things here. So here is the hangar I was looking for. So pretty spacious here. Let's get through here. Where's the door into there? There it is. So this hangar, when you open this, will raise up. The the doors will open and it will raise up and you can uh, head outside in your ship. So Pretty neat. Uh, another elevator. Same elevator. Let's go in the elevator. There's so much to the sea in this ship. I can't spend the whole time here. Oh, I gotta call the elevator. That's why it's not working. Let's call it. I believe we have one floor left. Is that true? Cartography. Maybe we're on cartography. No, no, we're on technical. Okay, so we'll go to cartography deck. That'll be the last. So look at this. Currently, absolutely useless. But it looks cool. But eventually, there's going to be stuff to do there. Eventually, you'll be able to uh, to plot courses, another skate pod, and then this airlock leads us around to the exterior of the ship. So we are now standing on the door. So those hangar doors I was talking about are right here. We're standing on them. In fact, if I go back in here at this window here, I believe, is this the control? I thought this was the control. There is a control somewhere in order to raise and lower the hangar so you can actually see it open up and the floor raise up. Maybe maybe I'm in the wrong spot. But this is the Carrick. So we got the Carrick and the Pisces Expedition, which we've seen, the Tumbrel Cyclone, the Terrapin, the Dragonfly Black, and the Freelancer. Those are all part of this massive starter pack. Uh, wrong way. As I said, I'm going to get lost. I'm trying to get that way. So I will actually try to find the Terrapin. I'll show you that, and that'll be the last thing I'm showing on these, uh, there we go, 
on this just this series just showing you starting ships. Definitely I wouldn't call this a starting ship. I wouldn't think of this. If you are unsure if you want to get in starter into Star Citizen and you don't know what package to get, if you're thinking like that, you are not thinking of getting this package. I can tell you right now. This is if, you know, you did well in Bitcoin or uh, you just sold your startup and you've got like retirement to look forward to and you want to be playing Star Citizen, sure, get this. But this is not the everyman's starter package. Certainly not mine. If you want to get into the Chairman's Club, buying this one package will get you there. So we're going to head out and we're going to go find a Terrapin. So I will maybe do a little quick cut here and we'll be back on the Terrapin. So this is the Anvil Terrapin. As you can see, like I said, a very solid looking, very solid looking tank like ship. Uh, cool thrusting pods here. Um, I think you get in from the side, is that where? I can't remember. I've been in this once during the Aerospace Expo. I rented one to try. Ramp access, there we go. So you get in from the side, not much in the way of uh, living quarters. We've got a scanning seat here, and we've got, I thought there was a bed here. There it is. Bed in the corner here. So it's two crew, one bed. Basically, this is a very military ship. You get in your ship, you have a job to do. One person is working, one person sleeping, and then you, you switch over. That's kind of the thought. I'm going to get in the pilot seat just to be able to use uh, exterior view as well as get the lights on. So first things first, get the lights on by turning the ship on. And we'll do an exterior view. You can see why this is called the Terrapin. Looks like a little turtle. Very solid, very cool. So that is a scanning dish on top because this is a reconnaissance type ship. Let's see, what does this look like when I... Cool. Now has this got VTOL? It does. Oh, that looks cool. Oh, neat. All right. So that is the Terrapin here. Now we got the lights on, we can kind of take a better look on the inside. So yeah, so this is basically reconnaissance. You've got someone doing scanning, someone doing piloting. You've got one seat. I'm guessing bathroom. One simple bathroom. All your uh, all your systems. You got your radar system. You got your I don't know what this is. Power plant. You got your life support. You got your jump drive there. So all the components are inside. Scanning station. Not really something you can do right now. Oh, and what has happened here? Oh, it's closed. For some reason, I thought that was open and black made no sense so this is the terrapin now the other things that come with this package I'm not gonna bother showing because it's gonna be a super long video to keep showing things besides to get the cyclone to get the dragonfly uh, I'm gonna have to go to uh, go to a planet side and the freelancer dir is not that different in my opinion from the regular freelancer so uh, it's got less of an interior but right now the functionality isn't really there to really show you how different it is. It does have a weird paint scheme. I'll put maybe a, a picture up right here so you can kind of see it, but that's that's it. Uh, one last thing to do is I'm gonna have to look at the Constellation Andromeda. So uh, I've run out of time to do some recording right now, so I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I don't know why I'm telling you because as you will see up next, Constellation Andromeda. So I am in Lorville. Uh, not the same account. This is my other account. Uh, and as you can see, all the ships I have here, uh, I'm getting out the Aurora in order to uh, check it out for my video I'm doing on the uh, 
the different starter pledge packages. Uh, however, as you can see, all these ships, uh, very, very little have I spent with real money. I bought a lot in game. So look at all the stuff I was able to buy in game. We have a Freelancer, which I bought by accident when I meant to buy a Max, Freelancer, La Freelancer Max. Got like something like the 890 jump. There's no way I'd buy that with real money. Uh, same with something like the Aegis Reclaimer. I got a Carrick, Valkyrie. We got some alien ships here, the Argo Mole. So, so many ships. So, what I might do is just kind of take some of these ships out and give them a go uh, uh, and kind of show around. That might be something I do in the future. But I was just thinking, I'm going to go check out um, at the same time the constellation. So I was pulling out the Aurora in order to do a, a little walk around and I was thinking New Deal had a constellation. I'm not sure which constellation this is so I'm going to look real quick. Constellation Phoenix. Now it's Constellation Phoenix. It is not the, the constellation that is part of the starter package but very similar in some respects. Uh, there are differences but since I don't have a constellation we're going to go check out this ship. We're just going to go check out the constellation. So outwardly the shape of the ships are very similar and they both have an elevator here. You can get into the the main deck, lift up into here. We've got a turret down there. Uh, we've got one of the uh, the flight seats. Now if we enter the pilot seat you can see the kind of view. Again, one of the seats you sit in and they rotate you into position, bring you up to the windows. So for such a large ship lots of field of view. Uh, we can also take a look around on the outside. You can see uh, it's got like these four engine pods. It's got the bridge straight out the front and it's got this long sleek cargo and body. And then you can see on the very bottom there at the back there is an auxiliary fighter. There's a little snub nose fighter that you can get with the ship that is attached there and you can undock that to fly down to a planet surface or you can use that as a secondary fighter. So we're going to go through here. We're going to look at the Phoenix. Remember, not the same as the the, uh, the constellation that you can get as a starter pack, but uh, very similar. I believe this one has fans here. Yeah, so you will not have like the wooden floors and the hot tub and things that exist here. It will be a little more industrial. No water yet. Uh, water in Orson, so I'm guessing in 3.14 maybe there will be water in this tub, who knows. But this is a very fancy ship, as you can see. But we'll go through to the back. We've got um, some cargo area, I believe, here. Oh, this is the fighter. So this is where you can get in and out of the fighter. So getting into the ship and undock, you can fly around, redock, and get back into the ship. Now I think maybe that's the difference, is the cargo area in the other constellations is filled up with this space here. Uh, unless there's a way down to another cargo area. I really don't know the, the layout. So this is not the constellation that you can get, but it is as close as I can get right now. Fish tank. Uh, close as I can get right now to showing you what a constellation looks like. I will say the front part here, the um, the bridge and the elevator, very similar with all the ships. I'll see if there's a last thing, if there's a cargo elevator here. You can only buy it, not open. So maybe there is no cargo. Oh, there's cargo bay. Why can't I? Hmm, how do I get the cargo bay? Open. So I don't know how the cargo, how you get to it from the ship, but as you can see, here, you could drive a large rover vehicle, uh, a ground-based vehicle. If you don't have commodities here, you can use this ship to haul uh, quite a bit of cargo. I don't know how much cargo was actually in this ship, how much space. How do I close this now? The joys of showing a ship that I do not own. So somehow there's controls somewhere. There we go. We'll check out the cargo room. 
Lots of space in here. So there's the cargo space. Oh, there's an elevator. So that's how you get in. So that is it. That is a constellation, not the constellation, but definitely one that you can use in game. So that is it for part two of my pledge video. Hopefully you found that entertaining and informative and it helped you make a decision on getting into this game and what some of those packages entail. Now, once you have a starter package, you can look at all the ships currently available in game. Uh, when 3.14 comes out, hopefully it is out now, you'll be able to get things like the new constellation, but there's many other ships out there to look at, as well as different ships available in game. So head on into the verse, Give them a try, and I hope to see you soon in the verse. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.